Hi everyone, welcome to the One Code Camp channel. In this video, we will take you on a journey of creating a basic server using Express.js. So we will focus on setting up the server infrastructure, taking you step by step through that process. And while we won't bother in coming HTTP requests just yet, you learn how to initiate an Express.js application, configure essential dependencies, and um, define a simple server that's made us on a specific port. So by the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of how to establish the groundwork for a web application using Express.js. So let's get started. Hello guys and welcome. In this video, we are going to continue on what we have discussed on our previous video, which is Express.js. So this time, we are going to code our first server that will use server.js and node.js. So if you're excited, then let's go and code our very first server. So now we are going to discuss Express.js and how we can write server codes or we can build a server using the codes we write with Express.js. So before we proceed with uh, writing of our code, let's first discuss or let's refresh our mind what a backend is. So a backend, it actually comprises the server side of web development. So everything that is in the server side is considered as the backend of web development. So a server is basically just a computer that runs 24 seven. And it handles all of the requests coming from the client side. So let's focus first in the server side. So the server computer, it actually runs a bunch of other applications inside of it. So some of these applications can actually be written via JavaScript using Node.js or Express plus Node.js. So also a server can also incorporate a database. So this uh, includes the data of your users, of your products or whatever uh, data you need to store. And your applications or your apps, they are basically communicating with your database also to provide you the full functionality of a server. So a client or the client side can access our server through the internet. So what it does is, for example, the client side or the client request for a particular website, for example, let's say google.com. So the web google.com so the client so the client will access google.com via the internet and once the server of google.com receives this uh, particular request particular request the application or the apps will process this particular request and for example if they access the index page of google.com then the app will find that particular page and once it found that page, it will be returned to the client side. So basically, that is how the client side and server side interacts with one another. So that is how a backend works. So the necessary steps in creating an express server are written right here. So first is that we will create a directory in our computer. And inside of that directory, we will have an index.js file. And also inside of that directory, we will initialize npm, the node package manager, in order for us to install the express package for that directory. And we will be able to use the express package in our index.js to write a server application. And then once we have finished writing that server application, we can now start the server and test the code that we have written. So now we can jump straight to the coding part of our server. So now that you know the steps of how to create an express server, then we can now jump to our favorite text editor. VS Code Sublime or any other text editor you want to use and let's start writing our server code for our backend. So what we need to do now is in our computer, we will open our terminal. 
And once we open our terminal, we will navigate to our desktop. So in order to do that, we issue the command cd for change directory. And let's go to desktop. And now we are in the desktop of our PC. So now we will proceed with the step one of creating an express server. And the step one specifically said that we need to create a directory. So in order for us to create a directory, we need to issue the command mkdir for make directory space the name of the folder or directory that we want to create. In this case, we will name our folder express-server. And you can now see here in the desktop that the express server folder or directory is now created. So that is step one. And now we can proceed to step two, which is to create an index.js inside of our directory. So to do that, back in our terminal, currently we are still in the desktop as shown here. So what we need to do is change directory again and go to the express server directory that press enter. So now we are inside of the express server directory and we issue the command touch space index.js to create the file index.js inside of the express server directory that we have here. So I will press enter and once I open the folder right here you can see that it contains the index.js file that we have created right here. So before we proceed with the third step, which is to initialize npm, what I will do is to open this particular directory or particular folder in VS Code. And in order to do that, since we are inside of the express server directory, what we need to do is issue the command code space dot, which will open the current directory that we are in in VS Code. And as you can see here, VS Code is now open and it automatically opened the express server folder for us which contains the index.js file right here, which is currently empty as of the moment. So what we can do next is to open the terminal. And to open the terminal, we need to press the keyboard buttons Control and J. And it will open the terminal for us inside of the express server directory, which is currently open in VS Code. So it automatically opens the terminal in the same directory your folder is currently in. So the next step that we need to do in creating an express server is to initialize npm. And in order for us to initialize npm, we just need to type the command npm space init space dash y, then press enter. And it will automatically generate a package JSON for us, which could, which contains this uh, few lines right here, like example, the name, of the directory, the version, the description, so on and so forth. So now that we have uh, initialized npf, we can now proceed to install express.js. And to install express.js in the terminal, we need to issue the command npm space i, which is a shortcut for the word install, space express. So express is the package that we are installing via the npm. So let's press enter. So after the installation is finished, you can see here in your package.json that it inserted a new line which says uh, dependencies and it says inside of it that it contains Express and the version of Express which is currently 4.18.2. Aside from that, in your file explorer, you can see that it generates a package package.json and a node modules folder where every packages and the dependencies of that packages are stored. So after installing Express.js, what we need to do next is to upgrade our projects to use ES6 codes and syntax. And to do that, in the package.json file, uh, just add a line here and the line will be type and the type would be module. And this particular line will help us in upgrading our codes and syntax to use the ES6 uh, to use the ES6 uh, syntaxes. 
So now after adding the pipe module line here, we can now go back to our index.js, which is right here. And we can now start writing our code for the server. So now we are going to write our server code. So in the first line, what we need to do is import express first from express, which is the package that we installed earlier. And in the next line, we just instantiate an app variable that basically comes from the express package that we installed. And then in the next line of code, we the app variable that we have here has a method called listen. And that particular method uh, accepts two arguments. The first argument is the port which this uh, particular server will listen to. And in this case, we will use the port 3000. And the second argument is a callback function that will execute uh, that will execute a console log and it will just say server running on port 3000. So basically this is all we, all the code. So basically, <clears throat> so basically this is all the code that we did in order to run the server. So I'm going to do some refactoring in our code right here. So instead of uh, supplying the port number directly to this uh, listen method, what I can do instead is to create another variable called port and assign that particular port in this uh, variable right here. And in this case, I will just change this 3000 to this uh, port variable we have here. And then I will just change this quotation marks into tactics. And I will delete this 3000 and then insert the variable port right here. So now the port is not hardcoded anymore in our listen method. So we can now change the port just in the top of our code. And in every part of our code that we use the port will be automatically changed to use this uh, particular port. So now we are done with uh, writing up the code for our server application. So now we proceed to our next step, which is to run this particular server. And in order for us to run this server, we need to issue a node command which uh, I will type here in the terminal. And the particular command is node space the name of your uh, server file, which in this case is index.js. So index.js and then press enter. And this command will run our file index.js, which contains our server code. And as you can see here, it says a uh, server running on port 3000. So we successfully run our server. And right now, you cannot input any other commands here on our terminal since it is currently running our server. So how do we access this uh, particular server that, are, that is currently running on our computer? So what we can do is uh, open the browser, which is right here. And then in the URL bar, we just need to type HTTP colon slash double slash localhost 3000, which is right here. And then we press enter and you can see that we get a response from this particular server that says cannot get slash so later we'll explain why we get this particular response from our server but but first let's discuss what local goals mean so local goals so first let's discuss what does the local host mean so local host means that you are using your own computer to run this particular server so Basically, in simple terms, localhost is your own computer that we are currently using. And the port here, 3000, which in this case you can see in our code, is the port that we specified right here on our code. So the port is like a door for your localhost or your particular computer. Or if this uh, particular code is deployed in a server, so the port is like a door to this particular server. And this particular server has a port 3000 that we are currently accessing to. So going back to our website, uh, we are receiving this error, cannot get forward slash. So this particular error says that we cannot get the index or the homepage of this particular website. So on the next video, we are going to discuss why we are getting this uh, particular error and how do we avoid getting this error. We will discuss how can our server handle requests and how can our server responds based on that 
request.